Lately, there has been some criticism of the Dymo label maker company because they introduced a new label printer that implements a form of digital rights management, DRM, to prevent you from using inexpensive aftermarket labels. And not only that, it is purposely incompatible with the previous labels that Dymo themselves sold. You may have seen the videos that Dave Jones and Louis Rossman did about that, but I thought I'd cover a different kind of label maker that Dymo has been manufacturing since 1958 which is still available today and is still the number one best seller on Amazon it's their embossing label maker I have a brand new one here and this one which is probably from the 1970s but they both use exactly the same kind of labels which you can buy inexpensive aftermarket ones like this pack of seven I got for $9.99 and no these can't print a shipping label at the touch of a button from your computers like the new ones can but they are wireless they never need charging they don't even use any batteries that's because they're powered by you they're completely mechanical and they're the only kind of label maker you can get which can make wood grain labels they don't produce these anymore but you can still find new old stock ones on eBay and that is a wood grain label so first let's look at this set I have that's probably from the 1970s judging by this pea soup green color we have the label maker itself we have some extra print wheels with different styles of writing on them and a bunch of labels for it including nice green color red and two black labels and it's kind of funny I just noticed this inside the lid it says caution Dymo cannot guarantee proper function of this tape writer if other than Dymo tape is used demand Dymo tapes look for the Dymo on the back so even 45 years ago they were still trying to prevent you from using cheaper aftermarket labels and the way you put the labels in this is kind of like loading a 35 millimeter film camera. You take your labels, you pull out a little bit like that, and then you stick it in the label maker. And you kind of feed it in like that and close the lid. And now if you squeeze the trigger, there you can see the labels coming out so now we can actually start making our label and now it's like entering your name into the high score of a video game you got to do it one letter at a time and you scroll through the letters A through Z you also get numbers and a couple symbols and whatever letter or number is in this little notch here is what it's gonna make so if I squeeze the trigger with it showing L we get an L in there you can't really see it right now but we'll see it in a moment I'll do A, then B, E, L, and now I just printed the word label. And if I want to cut off my label, there's this other trigger we squeeze, and that cuts it. And now we have a label that says label. It also makes this little slice in the label to make it possible to peel off the backing which gives you the sticky label surface so now you can stick this label onto anything and it will adhere and I don't know if the new one can do that but this vintage one you can actually change the print wheel so I think if I pull on this I can pull that out that's the normal style writing we also get a vertical character wheel so instead of the labels going horizontal they would go vertical and we also get a script style wheel which is quite interesting so I'll try to put that in so now we can do script writing and there's actually different thicknesses which is another feature I don't think the new ones support anymore this is the thicker style and then we have this red label which is a little bit thinner and this one has a setting for that if you pop it in that way it's for the thicker labels if you push this in like here that makes it set for the thinner labels so I'll pull out a little bit of this stick it in the machine and feed it in enough for the wheel to catch onto it 
And now if I squeeze it a bunch of times, I had a little bit of trouble with this earlier. Wasn't really wanting to catch on these thinner labels. There it goes. Got it this time. Now we're ready to make our script style labels. So I'll write the word script. There's a lowercase s in script, in case you don't know your cursive. And there is the word script in script. Look at that. Now I'm going to open up this bag of cheap Chinese aftermarket labels and I'll see if they'll work just as good as the official Dymo labels work, despite Dymo's warning not to use them. We've got red, green, blue, and three black labels and kind of a yellowish brown almost, kind of a mustard color on that. There you can see the change of design. This is the original, probably 1970s Dymo label, and this is the new aftermarket label. And it's the same basic size, but it uses a lot less plastic on the housing. And I thought maybe that's just because this is just a cheap aftermarket label. But I have this official Dymo label, and you can see it's the same basic idea. So at some point, they changed the design of the housing. Interestingly, these Dymo labels are made in Belgium. Look for other colors, blue, green, red, and rainbow, which is not as exciting as it sounds because that is not a multicolored label, that's just a multi-pack of different colors. Now I'm going to open up this brand new Dymo label maker, which cost me $11.59 on Amazon. I noticed it has a copyright date of 2009 on it, but they're still selling it brand new today. So they don't really change the design of this that often, but it's still the number one best-selling label maker on Amazon. It comes with three sets of labels. There's one in the label maker already, and then you get two more here. And the new one is Sad Onion Rated. Here's the new one, and like I said, it comes preloaded with labels. And I noticed whoever was putting this in the package at the factory used it to write out Dymo on the label. And it doesn't come with any instructions. I guess they figure if they've been selling the same product for over 50 years, you should know how to use it by now. Okay, that's where the labels go in. And on this one, instead of having a separate trigger to cut off the label, you move the wheel to the cut position. And it's kind of hard to see if the reflections, but there's two vertical lines in this window here, and the letter between those lines is what it's gonna make. So if I squeeze the trigger, I get a C. And I must say, this feels really cheap and chintzy when you're using it. The letters are more spaced out on the label, and the quality of the printing is not nearly as good as that vintage one. But what do you expect when they sell you an entire label maker with three sets of labels for $11? Now I'm going to try this aftermarket label and see if it works okay in this new one. So you got to kind of stick it in and feed it forward and now we get our labels. So there's the official Dymo label on the top and the aftermarket label underneath and aside from the difference in color I can't tell any difference between them. Despite Dymo telling you not to use aftermarket labels they seem to work fine. Now I want to try out this vintage wood grain labeling tape. You can tell how old it is because it shows a reel-to-reel -reel tape, a 35 millimeter film camera, actually two of them, and it was originally sold at Buy Mart, <laughs> it's a funny name, for 73 cents, which was a discount over its list price of $1.25. They say Dymo labeling takes make durable, permanent plastic labels of easy to read white embossed letters, available in a quarter inch, three eighths, and a half inch, Nowadays, only 3 eighths inch is available anymore. In the following colors, black, red, blue, avocado, green, wood grain, and gold. New cloth marking tape for iron-on sew-on is available. 
and 3 8 inch magazines. And there it is of the older style of housing, so I don't know if it's going to fit in that new machine, but we'll find out. And there it is, a wood grain label. And yes, that older style of housing still fits in the new machine. And there's our wood grain label. So let me use it to write out the word wood grain. This very cheap feeling wheel. Very cheap and plasticky. Not nearly as nice to use as the old one. So again, very uh, poor quality embossing, but you can see it still basically works just as good as the new labels do. Except you can't buy this wood grain label anymore. You can only get it new old stock on eBay like I did. I'll move it to the cut position. And there we go. There's our wood grain label. We can peel it off and stick it on, I don't know, the packaging it came on. There we go wood grain label. And back in the 80s and 90s when these were more popular you can not only get aftermarket labels you can get an entire aftermarket label maker such as this one from Rotex. It works with the same Dymo compatible labels just like the real thing. It works basically the same way. It's another cheap plasticky device but it actually feels a lot better than this new one. There's a direct comparison between the brand new Dymo label maker and the vintage one. And ironically, the brand new one looks like it's a 40 year old worn out piece of junk. Well, this one looks like it's brand new when it's exactly the opposite. So I don't recommend these cheap new Dymo label makers. People are going to look at this and say, oh, these labels are crap. Why did people ever use these? Well, no, it's this that's crap. If you use a good one that's 40 years old, you get good quality labels out of it. This time I tried using another one of those brand new cheap aftermarket labels in this vintage machine and as you can see it worked perfectly fine. So there you go. That's been my look at these embossing label makers from Dymo which have been around since 1958 and are still in production today. Although I would not recommend buying this official new Dymo label maker because it produces noticeably inferior results compared to a vintage one.